Hi. Welcome to the session on Here a MOOC, There a MOOC, Everywhere a MOOC MOOC, about massive open online courses. There's going to be three parts to the session. First will be an introduction where we cover what, what's the purpose of this session, and some of the basics. What is a MOOC? Where are the MOOCs? What do they cover? Second, we'll cover what are the pros and cons of MOOCs. Some people think that MOOCs are the answer to everything. They're going to replace colleges. They're just going to be revolutionary. And other people think, well, this is another fad. We're never going to use this very much. So we'll discuss what those pros and cons are. And finally, we'll discuss what are the future of MOOCs. Do you plan to use them? How do you intend to use them? Uh, what, are, what are they really good for? All right? So that's the purpose of this session. Let's get started. Again, welcome to the course. Here's, here MOOC, there MOOC, everywhere MOOC MOOC. So let's start out with what is a MOOC? Well, it's a massive open online course. So I could sit here and talk to you about it, but I thought, you know what? Let's try to find, go on the internet, let's find a lesson that would actually tell us. Here it is. What's a MOOC? The massive open online course is a response to the challenges faced by organizations and distributed disciplines in a time of information overload. It used to be that when you wanted to know about something, you could do a few things. You could ask someone, you could buy a book, you could try to figure it out for yourself, or you could call a school. If that school offered the course in the thing you were trying to figure out, you could go there and take it. You could get access to information about a topic. An instructor had combed through journals and books to pull the information together from a library. You might even find others who are also interested in the same things that you are. The MOOC is built for a world where information is everywhere, where a social network obsessed with the same thing that you are is a click away, a digital world, a world where an internet connection gives you access to a staggering amount of information. This video will introduce you to how a massive open online course is one way of learning in a networked world. A MOOC is a course, it's open, it's participatory, it's distributed, and it supports lifelong networked learning. In one sense, a massive open online course is just that. It's a course. It has facilitators and course materials. It has a start and an end date. It has participants. But a MOOC is not a school. It's not just an online course. It's a way to connect and collaborate while developing digital skills. It's a way of engaging in the learning process that engages what it means to be a student. It is, maybe most importantly, an event around which people who care about a topic can get together and work and talk about it in a structured way. The course is open. All of the work gets done in areas accessible for people to read and reflect and comment on. The course is open in the sense that you can go ahead and take the course without paying for it. You might pay to get the credit through an institution, but you're not paying for participating in the course. It's also open in the sense that the work done in the course is shared between all the people taking it. The material put together by the facilitators, the work done by the participants, it's all negotiated in the open. You get to keep your work and everybody else gets to learn from it. The course is participatory. You really become part of the course by engaging with other people's work. Participants are not asked to complete specific assignments, but rather to engage with the material with each other and with other material they may find on the web. You make connections between ideas and between you and other people. You network. One of the outcomes that people get from the course are the network connections they built up through engaging with each other. The course is distributed and all these blog posts and discussion posts, video responses, articles, tweets and tags all knit together to create a networked course. They're mostly not found in one central location, but rather all over the internet in different pockets and clusters. There's no right way to do the course, no single path from the first week to the last. This allows for new ideas to develop and for different points of views to coexist. It also means that one of the side effects of a MOOC is the building of a distributed knowledge base on the net. The course is a step on the road to lifelong learning. MOOCs promote independence among learners and encourages participants to work in their own spaces and to create authentic networks that they can easily maintain after the course finishes. A MOOC can promote the kind of network creation that lifelong learning is all about. The course part is just the beginning. And how can you go about finding one of these? Well, news that a MOOC will be offered usually spreads on online networks. 
People who have reputations for interesting skills or innovative thinking on a topic decide to collaborate by offering an open online course covering that topic. Anyone who wants to join in can. In a MOOC, you can choose what you do, how you participate, and only you can tell in the end if you've been successful, just like real life. All right. So let's talk about a brief history of where MOOCs came from. The term MOOC really began in, in 2012, and there were some other earlier things. If you, there's I've, In the Schoology notes, I put there's some references to earlier MOOCs, but really, when it really, the rubber hit the road, was when Daphne Kohler and Andrew Nij, I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name, uh, professors at Stanford got together and they thought, does anybody want to listen to our online classes for free? And so they, it's really just a technological extension of the old mail order courses. And Coursera was the first class major player that did this. Well, the answer, short answer to this is, yeah, millions of people are listening to these. And so once Coursera started, edX, which is a combination, was started by Harvard and MIT. Udacity, which was started by Sebastian Thune, who was also a Stanford professor. Stanford's looking at all their professors doing this and going, hey, we need to get in on this. So Stanford Online started these MOOCs, and they're all outgrowths of what Coursera started. Now, there's also Khan Academy, which that started in 2006, and it really wasn't considered a MOOC because mainly it was just, it's, when it started, it was just about it was lectures on math. But now he's trying to create a curriculum for the whole world, and he's partnering with Microsoft and Gates and Google, and they're building some amazing artificial intelligence to provide feedback, which is a big part of what MOOCs are. But anyway, that's a brief history. Now, where, who are the, how many users are there? Well, Coursera has over 17.5 million when I looked on their website when I put this together. edX, over 5 million. Udacity, around 4 million. The key point is there's lots of institutions. And the number of institutions participating, it's in the thousands. I mean, every major college and university wants to get their class on a major MOOC platform so that they can uh, figure out what to do. Okay, so that's the, the basic introduction of what a MOOC is and, and who they are, all right? Now let's, we'll go on to another video and talk about where they are.